One of the coolest things about this new place where I keep my bees is that I can park the van right next to them. There's no walking involved, it's great. I can be really lazy. And I'm gonna take a little moment to uh, appreciate this vehicle. This um, VW Caddy has been with me for the last uh, three years. I need to get a bee suit on because there's bees everywhere. They seem to be quite interested. Oh God, I can hear them buzzing around my head. Anyway, as I was saying, this is my VW Caddy. Uh, I bought it three years ago, I think. And in that time, we've done over 50,000 miles. When I first bought the van, I converted it into a little camper. So I did some woodwork, put a bed in the back, had a little pull-out drawer with all my kitchen stuff in, and there's a little shelving unit above uh, the desk. It's also, as you can see, uh, running off solar power, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, so right now it will be collecting the sun's energy. And after I converted it into a camper, I took it on a couple of trips around Europe. So I drove into Europe through France, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, as far down as Croatia. And I had some incredible uh, times on the road. But now the use for the van is the Beamer Bill. In the back of here, I will keep all of my beekeeping equipment that I'll need for this season of beekeeping. Uh, so I can simply just open the back of the van up like so and then tend to my bees uh, Which is it's just so ideal. I would also like to say a big thanks to Adrian Flux for supporting this YouTube channel and Ensuring my beautiful van for the past three years And if you'd like to get a quote on your vehicle doesn't matter what it is. It could be a converted Camper van. It could be a Beamer bill like this. It could be anything a uh, classic car. Use the link in the description of this video and get yourself a quote from Adrian Flux. Uh, once again, thanks so much to them for supporting this channel and ensuring my van. Anyway, let's check up on the bees and see what's going on inside the hives. There we go. Where's my other glove? This is pretty nerve wracking because this is the first time I've looked inside these hives since they were back in Sussex, back where I used to live. We're gonna start off with this hive here. This is a small nuke box with six frames in and it's from when I made a split last year. So on top here are just the feed blocks that I gave them. They've got a little bit of honey or stores in there. Not much though. Yay, that's a good sign. There's a queen which is laying eggs. Eggs look like tiny grains of rice. That's a good sign. That means there's a queen in here. Another frame of brood. Basically eggs, larvae and capped brood. Oh, there's the queen. It's got a, um, a, a yellow bit of pen on its head. Although it's kind of rubbed off now. But that is a queen from not last year, but the year before. So this queen is two years old now well that's a great sign to see that the queen is there laying plenty of eggs and there's just another frame of brood oh loads of eggs in that side 
That's a really good sign because the colonies should be expanding pretty rapidly at the moment. As we go into spring, there needs to be more and more bees being born so that there's a big force of foraging bees that can go out and collect pollen and nectar. That frame has just got loads of pollen in it. So typically bees will build their nest up so that on the inside, they've got all the baby bees and on the outside, they've got all the food stores. I love seeing all the different colors of pollen. It looks so beautiful. And look, you can see some of the bees with pollen on their legs. Those are bees which have been out in the fields and been collecting pollen. and they'll be storing it into these cells. What I think I'm going to do with this hive is put them into a full-sized hive because soon they will have used up all the space in this mm -hmm. hive. They would have used up all the different frames and they'll need more space to lay eggs, more space to store honey and pollen. And if I don't give them any more space, they are likely to then want to swarm because swarming is what they do when they need more space. Luckily, I have a hive which is kind of ready to go just over there. So what we're going to do is move this hive just out the way for a second. And we've got the new hive which we will put in the same position. And all the bees that were going into that hive will now fly back into that end. And then what I'm also going to do is rearrange these frames. So there's six frames there, which I want to be in here. I'm going to take out these frames first. So now we can place the frames in, in the same order. There's the queen on that one. It's good to know that she is safe. Mm -hmm. now they're probably getting a bit confused, but they're actually really calm. Like they're not all swarming around my head. They're staying pretty chilled. And what we'll do is we'll push all the frames up to one end. There's a bit of mold inside here, but I don't think that should be a problem. The bees will sort that out themselves. The nest is there and they will slowly build that out and then end up hopefully using the whole hive. That's the plan. I'll give them back some of their sugar in case they need it. There we go, that is the first hive looked at. Things are looking okay. There's a queen in there, which is the main thing, and the queen is laying eggs. There's brood in all stages. There's pollen coming in. I can actually see at the entrance now, plenty of bees bringing in fresh pollen. So I think, Things are under control with this hive. Right then, let's look at hive number two. This one I, I'm kind of worried about. There's just not as much activity going on at the entrance. And it looks like there's not many bees in here. So yeah, this isn't looking great to be honest. Oh my goodness, there's so few bees. This is a full-sized hive. This was full of bees last year and they're only on maybe three frames. So this isn't looking too good. Nothing so far. I'm 
don't know what's going on here. There's just no sign of a queen. There's no eggs, no larvae, no brood. Oh, there's the queen. What? I just found her, but she's not laying any eggs. Like if you look in the cells, there's nothing, nothing at all. Which is kind of strange, but I guess that does happen. There's definitely no eggs. I wonder when the queen stopped laying eggs, because there's definitely none in here. See that? Nothing. Just bees. Not a huge amount of them. Well, that's not good. Basically means that this colony is going to slowly die out if I don't do anything. I guess what I need to do is I either need to get a new queen and put it in here, but I have a feeling it's kind of too early on in the year to do that. I don't know if there'll be people selling queens at this time of year. Um, or I join this colony with that one because that one's got a queen. So if we join them together, then it should work. Unfortunately, if I want to join two hives together, I have to kill the queen that I don't want, which is the one in this hive. I don't want to do it, but I have to. Oh gosh, oopsie, sorry. I currently can't find the queen anywhere. There she is. There's the queen. And she isn't laying any eggs when she should be. So unfortunately, she is going to die. Sounds brutal. I'm, I'm a good person, I promise. I'm doing it for the good of the bees. Just like that, she's gone. And now we need to join this with either that one or that one if that one's got a queen. Hopefully we're not in the same position on that hive. Well, that's not so good news. We'll see what's going on in the final hive. Hopefully things are looking better. Whitey ho then. Fingers crossed, things are looking better in here. Mm, it's looking slightly better. Still not amazing though. The colony doesn't look that full. But if I compare it to how it looked this time last year, I'm pretty sure it was like the whole thing was full. It might be something to do with the weather we've been having. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really know. Let's have a look. See what we can find. They got some honey stored around here, which is good. More honey stored there. The question is, is there a queen which is laying eggs? If there isn't, then I'm gonna be truly confused. No sign yet. Oh, I just seen the queen. Oh, there's the queen. She's looking good. Oh, yay. And there is brood in here. Brood and eggs, that's good. That's very good. I was getting really worried there. She's got a really bright pink spot. Well, that's a massive relief. She's laying eggs, but not, doesn't seem like there's loads. Like the brood area is pretty small. You can see, under these bees, if I move them out of the way. That is the brood, that's the cat brood. And then in these other cells that you can't see, there's larvae and eggs. So at some point in the next, I guess, week, this will all look like that. <laughs> 
there. Inside these hexagonal cells are where so many things take place. Not only are they used for storing honey and pollen, which are the food sources for the bees, it's also where eggs are laid and where new bees are born. Once a queen bee lays a worker bee egg, it will hatch after three days into a larva, where it will be fed by other bees. Nine days after the egg was laid, the bees will cap the cell over with wax, and on the 21st day after the egg was laid, the bee will emerge from the cell. A queen bee can lay thousands of eggs a day, so you can see how a colony can grow very quickly over a short period of time. Look, there's a bee that is being born. You can see it trying to get out of the cell that it's been living in for the past 20 days or so. And you can probably see inside those darker cells the larvae. Oh look, the baby bee is slowly making her way out. Yeah! That bee has just seen daylight for the first time of its life. That was amazing. We just witnessed something magical. And that same thing will happen to all of these other brown cells over the next few days. Now, do I join that colony with this one or join it with that one? I think this one probably needs more of a hand. And they're doing a good job at storing plenty of nectar away. Look at that. That frame is filling up nicely. You can always feel from the weight of the frames how much food they've got in there. But this one's a lot heavier. And the other frames are pretty much the same. So that's doing okay. Well, interesting stuff. Now to join the two hives together, I need to probably grab some newspaper. Unless I have some in my car. Now I couldn't find any newspaper, but I have some loo roll. Um, basically the aim is to create a thin barrier between the two hives that you're joining together. Just so the smell doesn't instantly um, like annoy the other bees, I guess. You want them to meet each other slowly so you basically put something thin like this or newspaper make a few holes the the, the smells can they can get used to the smells um, and slowly chew through and then they meet in the middle and then hopefully they don't fight so now we're going to lay this tissue paper over this is not how you're really meant to do it but i don't know what else to use it's a good job it's not windy today, otherwise this would be impossible. And this won't make a huge difference, but it would just mean that all the bees that were in that colony will be able to join forces with these, so they'll work together on foraging. And it should make the colony just that little bit stronger going into the spring. So now we have the queen right colony at the bottom. We've got the queenless colony at the top. They should eat their way through and then join together. And if you're wondering what will happen to all the bees that return back to here, because this colony and this colony are so close, um, the bees will just disperse themselves between the two they won't get too lost. Well, there we go. First check up on the bees this season. Little bit of bad news, little bit of good news. We have a couple of queen bees which are laying. I've hopefully sorted out that problem. The colony which had the queen which wasn't laying no longer has that queen. I'm a murderer, I killed it. But I joined it with a colony that does have a queen. So they can now hopefully do their thing, integrate, and become a bigger and stronger colony. This hive also has a queen. The Waray hive, the tall hive over there, 
I'm gonna leave that one to it for a few more weeks still. I hope you enjoyed this little bee update. I will be doing regular updates throughout the season so you can continue to follow along on this journey of beekeeping. See you soon.